Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and this is not a rant. <laughs> now, if I filmed this a couple of days ago, it may have sounded a little bit sharper, maybe something like a rant, because after I released my tour video on Sunday, I was taken a little off guard by some of the comments. I had already filmed this video, but I'm redoing it today because I wanted to make sure I addressed all the questions that you had, including why I switched to a fifth wheel, exactly how the money worked out. I'm going to give you the specifics and I'm going to answer a lot of the other common questions like, am I still single? Am I quitting YouTube? Am I just parked somewhere? Am I still going to boondock how the slides work, how the cat's doing? And more. And then at the end, I might have a word for the haters. First of all, I'm going to tell you guys why I switched from a class seat to a fifth wheel and by the way, if you're wondering why the blinds are closed, it's because it's um, 4.20 in the morning. <laughs> it's still dark outside. The reason I switched to a fifth wheel is because my camping style just evolved. And I started out in a B plus, and then I went to a C, and then I decided on a fifth wheel. And here's why. I was spending a lot more time actually camping than I was driving. And one time my friend Badge said to me, and I'll link his channel below, he's great. He said, well, do you want to live or do you want to travel? I didn't know what he meant, but I was like, yeah, sure, live, travel. And then I thought about it and I got what he was saying. If your camping style is to move on frequently, or you know, let's say you want to travel the whole country in a short amount of time, then a smaller rig is great. For me, I had a smaller rig, but I was spending 10 days or two weeks at a campsite. And I'm full time, I have a cat, sometimes I have somebody with me, and I'm working long hours at a computer inside my rig, and it just wasn't working for me. If you are new to my channel, you might notice that on my logo, it says why, how, and where, because I am not trying to promote one style of camping. I'm trying to help anybody who just wants to get on the road and change their life for the better. You know, I like to say that living full time in an RV is just another housing option. And like all other housing options, there's gonna be all kinds of different styles and budgets and people out there. If you've been following me for a while, then you've heard me say camp like you. I actually did a video last year called Camp Like You, where I talked about all the clicks in the nomadic community, especially on YouTube. It's like the van people don't like the RV people and the RV people don't like the schoolie people and so on. And I don't get it. I think that your rig changes with your life. I interviewed a group of women from um, RVing Women last year, and I talked to a lady there that had been full-time on the road for 30 years. And she told me she'd been in every conceivable type of rig, and I was like, wow, really? And she said, yeah, truck camper, bumper pole, van, class A, class C, class B. She had done it all because she had different needs in her life. And that's what happened with me. I'm not saying I'm going to be in a fifth wheel forever. I don't know. If all of a sudden I got the urge to travel more, then I might go back to a van or a sprinter van or build something out. Or I might build out a schoolie or something like that someday when I have the time to actually do it. This time I needed a rig. I needed a house. I needed a place to live. And this fit my needs and my budget. I'll get to that. So if you want to be in a class C or a van or whatever it is that's good for you, I support your choice. <laughs> I think that one of the benefits of this life is that you can have the widest range of available options to get you where you want to go towards your own personal happiness or whatever it is. And then you can look at all of those options with, you know, confidence and wisdom and try and choose the right ones for you. And in a year, you know, reevaluate because life changes. Life just changes. And it changed for me. So that's what happened. That's why I chose a fifth wheel. Now, really quick, let me tell you the evolution of this. Because when I first got on the road, as some of you know, I had never driven an RV in my life until I flew out to pick the one up that I bought in South Dakota. <laughs> and so the idea of towing something to me was like terrifying. I had never towed anything. I had never driven anything even remotely as big as a 25 foot RV. So I didn't consider um, getting like a bumper pull trailer or a fifth wheel at that point. But when I realized that 
the rig that I had wasn't working for me and I did have problems with the rig. I'll tell you about that in a second. Around that time, I was camping at a Harvest House location in Oregon and this fifth wheel pulled in next to me. Now, I didn't know at the time that that was their second trip and I'm sorry guys I don't remember your names if you see this hey <laughs> you changed everything for me but I saw this guy back in the solitude he had and he literally went mm, and the thing went up and he unhitched his truck and it went mm, <laughs> and then the leveling jacks came out and that was it. it that was it I had convinced myself that it was really hard to unhook and hook up a fifth wheel. Now, I'm still new at it and I'm still learning. I'll tell you about that in a minute too. But it kind of opened my eyes. And then I saw the inside and I was like, what? Come on. Then it just so happens that a friend of mine wrecked his fifth wheel and it's somebody that I trust and admire. And he got a solitude. He didn't tell me until after I made my choice because he wanted me to make my own choice. But um, that seemed like serendipity to me. So some of you had comments about the fifth wheel like, I can't stealth camp anymore. I'm gonna have worse gas mileage. I can't fit into the same campsites. True, all true. And I took it all into consideration. So I only stealth camped in my first rig. My second rig, the Class C, I couldn't stealth camp in really. I did it a couple times, but I didn't feel um, as stealthy in that one. But I only was doing that a few days and somebody else said, oh, you can't camp at the Golden Gate Bridge anymore because I did that. And, um, that's true, but those things were like 10 days out of my year. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm driving out into beautiful natural places down some dirt road and staying there for a couple of weeks. So the trade-off for me was that I lose those things and I get worse gas mileage, but I have a better living space for me. And hey, I camp for you know 10 days, two weeks, and then maybe I drive three hours, five hours, seven hours, and I camp again. So the gas mileage is definitely gonna be worse, but to me, it was worth it. I know some of you have questions about what happened with my Tiffin, and um, I had problems. Now, every rig is gonna have problems. My issue in my Tiffin couldn't be fixed at a local dealership, and it had to be sent back to the factory in Alabama. So some of you asked about my garden. I had to get rid of the garden so that Tiffin could take my rig, and I didn't know how long they were gonna have it, and they certainly weren't gonna water my plants, right? And at that point, you know, I had to give up something like that, and I was really sick of having to give up my whole life, my house and my car and my office, every time I had a problem like this. So that was already wearing on me, but then when I got it back, I decided that um, that was not the right rig for me, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. I will say, however, since I know a lot of you guys listen to you know my channel and other channels while you're trying to decide what kind of a rig to get. I will say that I liked my first Sprinter, Mercedes Sprinter. I've had the Mercedes Sprinter twice, once on my B plus and once on my C. And um, I've heard other people complain about the Sprinter, they're expensive to fix, but they get great gas mileage. And if I had um, the desire to build out a van, I would absolutely consider a Sprinter for the chassis. But for me personally, as a consumer, I would not get like a B or a C on a Mercedes Sprinter again, only because they don't carry a lot of weight. And the manufacturers, of course, want to make them attractive with bathrooms and big tanks and nice kitchens and TVs and all that stuff. But since they don't carry a lot of weight, my feeling is that weight has to come from somewhere. <laughs> And I wonder, you know, behind all the bells and whistles, um, where that weight is coming from. And I can tell you that when the guy pulled up next to me in that berry farm, one of the problems I was having was with a slide. And he pulled out his slide next to my slide, and my slide looked like um, a go-kart slide. I have the difference in the thickness of the materials and the thickness of the rubber and the seal and all that stuff. I was like, what? <laughs> it was just astounding. Okay, the next question I got a lot was about the truck. What do I need to pull this thing? Now, I'll tell you, we actually fell in love with a 41 foot fifth wheel, but I wasn't going to go that big. 35 was about the smallest that I saw that had a floor plan that worked for me. To safely pull this rig, I really needed uh, like a 350. So I got a Ford F350. I could have gotten away with a 250, which would have been less expensive, 
but I would have been at the max for the weight limit. And I'm telling you guys, after having the B and the C, I wanted to be heavy. I'm just going to be honest. Um, those rigs were tall and light. And so in the wind, they were not fun to drive. And I did a lot of research about either a trailer or a fifth wheel. I liked how the fifth wheel maneuvered better and that the weight went into the back of the truck and um, how it hitched up and unhitched. I had to get the truck that went with that. And I went with an F-350 Dually, <laughs> which I'm telling you, when I go down the road, people are like, what's that little gray haired old lady doing in the F-350 Dually? <laughs> Again, you guys, I'm gonna tell you in just a second how the money worked out, but I needed to get a truck that I felt safe with. That was the thing. And that if I wanted to switch out my rig later again and get a different trailer or a different fifth wheel, I could easily do that with the same truck. And before I hit the money part, I'm gonna address one quick question that I got a few times in the comments, which is that maybe I'm not safe because I'm inside my rig and I'd have to go outside my rig to get my truck to drive away. I think a lady actually said, and I quote, I thought solo women weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> so look, when I first got my first two rigs, absolutely that was a consideration for me. It was also a consideration in my choice, but I have not had a problem. When I get to a spot, if I feel like it's sketchy at all, I leave. And if you guys have watched any of my past videos like no fear here um i've said that my rig and now my rig and my truck are like home alone 2.0 i'm not naive i'm not dumb about um the dangers out there but um somebody would have a problem with me <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say i decided that this was a good choice for me i'll tell you i did consider this in my last rigs you know you have to unlevel you have to put in the slides you have to start the car you have to get away with this, if I can make it to the truck, I can peel out. I don't have to worry about bringing up the leveling jacks or bringing in the slides. So you never know what could happen, but I just wanted to address that question. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the money. Now, most of the comments that I was surprised by were the ones that were kind of clicky, you know, like, that's not an okay kind of a rig, those kind of comments. But the other ones were that um, I must be rich <laughs> and that this was too glamorous of a vehicle and I must be a one percenter. I, you know, I'll tell you, I'm either really bad at math or I'm not a one percenter. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you guys exactly how the money worked out. And here's the fact. This rig, my new fifth wheel, was way less expensive than my last rig was. I bought the Class C. It was a 2019. I knew exactly what I could get it for. And by the way, I did a video called Crews Don't Lose, which um, was three months of research on how to determine if you're buying or selling at the best rate. If you need that information, go back and look at that because I knew what I could get that rig for. I got a great deal on the Tiffin. When I went to trade in the Tiffin, I got for my trade $5,000 less than what I paid for it. So I guess you can look at that as if I took a $5,000 loss, but it wasn't 30%. It was like 4%. That was the loss that I took. And for me, that's a lot less than I would have paid to live in a house. So I paid $5,000 to use that Tiffin for a year. And then the Tiffin cost so much more than this new rig that I got essentially 24 grand back. So I carefully considered the budget, the lifestyle, everything. I did have to pay for some stuff that I didn't want to, like taxes and insurance and registration on two vehicles now instead of one. But when I took everything into consideration, that was okay because I knew it was the right thing for me. So essentially, I traded in my Tiffin and got a big check back, which I used for the truck. <laughs> so you guys, it was pretty much a wash except that one of the reasons that I wanted to get a fifth wheel was because I wanted to get a massive amount of solar. Doug and I were walking around the RTR last year and we passed this guy with a remote control in his hand and he was pointing it at his fifth wheel and this just bank of solar panels came up on a tilt and we had to go over and talk to him and he gave us a tour of his fifth wheel and I was like wow 
I could only fit 400 watts of solar on my last rig and there was only room for two batteries underneath the steps and they couldn't be lithium. So I am getting a Whopper solar system put on because I'm a boondocker. In the long run, it does save me money because I don't pay to be in campgrounds very often. That answers the next question, which is, are you still gonna boondock? Some people thought that I wasn't going to be able to boondock in this rig. Look, you guys, this thing is gonna be a boondocking champ. I know lots of friends who have similar vehicles. I've interviewed a lot of nomads that boondock just fine. And I went through all of my favorite boondocking camping spots that I've been to. I would say there are two that I wouldn't go to in this rig. And frankly, those two I had no business going to in my other rigs because the roads were too rough. All of my favorite places, no problem, I can go in this rig. The next question I got is, are you just parked? Did you just buy a house to park? Why didn't you just buy a house? <laughs> well, I've always said this is my house. And no, I have not gone off the road. I'm not full-timing in an RV park. I have been in one space for about six weeks now. I'll explain that to you guys later. But it was just because of logistics and travel and the TED Talk and family over the holidays, but um, pretty soon I'm heading back out to boondock in this thing and I cannot wait. No, I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm not going off the road. And yes, I'm still solo. When I decided to get this rig, I had to make sure it was good for me alone and it would be good if I was with another person on the road. Doug is not with me on the road. Doug is my boyfriend, if you guys are new to my channel. He's invited. And if he does, this is a great rig for us because we're not hitting each other in the face with our elbows in here. <laughs> we can both stand in the kitchen at the same time. And another really common question was, how is it to drive? Like I said, I was intimidated to tow anything. And this was a big decision for me because you can't test drive a fifth wheel. I had to come to terms with my fear because one motto that I've lived by for years is what one man can do, another can do or what one woman can do, another can do, or whatever. I know a lot of people, and a lot of solo people, that drive fifth wheels, no problem, hook up, unhook, no problem. If they can do it, I can do it. So I think it's gonna be okay, but I am taking lessons because I don't wanna hurt my new baby, and I don't wanna hurt my other new baby. Oh, and by the way, a couple of you asked me what the name of my RV is and the RV and the truck are Punxsutawney Phil, which is a reference to Groundhog Day because Punxsutawney was the town that Bill Murray went to where every day he woke up and he could reinvent his life in the same space, but every day he could create something new. That's how I feel about this RV. And now, a word for the haters. Never mind. I don't have time for the haters. I wish them and everybody else the happiness and freedom that I found on the road. And I'll see you guys on Sunday for the view queue. If you have any other questions for me, please do put them down below. As always, everybody have happy travels and be free.